Okay, next up, let's get our cameras actually following our 3D character as she moves through the space. So, very first frame, camera in this case is already in position, I just need to unlock it. So I'm going to select that camera in the outliner, and I'm going to select all those attributes in the channel box, and just as a reminder, you can get, your, get to your channel box um, by flicking through the tabs here on the right hand side of the screen. So if I select all those attributes in the channel box, I can right click and hold for a menu here, and go unlock selected and that will unlock those and allow me to freely move and animate that but I don't want to at the moment because my shot is set up so nicely here I'm gonna slap a animation keyframe on there as quick as possible before I accidentally screw up my um, shot framing so with that camera selected I'll just um, do set key and that way I've got a keyframe on that character the next one is to set up the camera so that it's framing her correctly for frame 160. So I need to get my 3D space looking like this 2D image. Right now, it really doesn't. Okay, let's make that happen. So, first off, it's going to be way faster for me to move my camera in the perspective view here um, than it's going to be trying to move it around in the 3D view, and let's just um, let's just turn off that 2D. Well, we'll turn X-ray back. We'll turn X-ray off, so that we can see our character a bit better. And um, I think perhaps we are on a bit of a Dutch angle here, so there's a bit more of a tilt to that camera than they should be necessarily. Um, and now, do I actually need to be? Yes, I do need to be looking up at her a little bit more, just not nearly as extreme as I was. Again, I'm looking. I'm dealing with a situation where um, I could do quite a bit in 2D that's not quite replicating into 3D space specifically in terms of uh, messing with fisheye lens and angles of things okay if I want to get that pose I really need to be coming up at her at a slightly different angle and I think I can work her the position of her head a little bit more so the whole thing here is about getting the spirit of the pose as much as possible. And there we go. I think that's finally starting to look like what's meant to look like in terms of getting that framing going on. Cool. Zoom in just a little bit more. It's starting to look a lot more like that 2D image. Um, okay, I like that framing. Let's uh, select that camera again and set another keyframe. And let's just make sure that nothing weird and crazy is happening. Well, except for that weird funky hand, which we're about we're going to fix in the next chapter when we do all of our in-betweens. Well, the camera moves from one position to the other just fine. So let's set up the camera position for the final frame as well. And once again, I'm going to move that into position in 3D space because it's just so much faster to move things in 3D space than to try and scoot it here where you're just sort of, you don't have a whole lot of control. Um, we're just going to get this as close as we can possibly get it. So she's... we're, we're supposed to be able to see quite a bit out that window. So let's, um, let's bring that camera around. And let's actually try and line up that positioning a bit better. I 
want to see down at that window. Here we go. I'm a bit more of an angle. Now that pose isn't exactly correct, but again, we need to get the spirit of the pose, if not the exact pose itself. And the least we could do is get the size of the character's head right. Okay. There's the pose there. Here's a window. And we could see the other characters in the train car as well. I think that's going to capture the gist of it. Let's just make the shot a little bit more interesting on this end. Oh no, let's let's pretend like we're trying to sort of see over her shoulder almost. Okay. All right. Let's set that keyframe once again. And I'm going to turn the image sequence alpha gain right down so I'm not distracted by that strange effect of having the 2D image flying around in the background. Oh, this horrible, terrible wrist. I can't wait to the next video where we can fix that. And she would stop here. And really, in the next video, we should also probably um, build in a bit of a pause here so we can linger as she lingers here, going, what the heck is going on? And then she decides to move forward and find some room at the window. And um, I'm really tempted to add some frames at the end of this animation um, with the camera just moving slightly over her left shoulder here and zooming in a bit more just as if we're coming in behind her and now we too want to look through and see what's out that window so I'm very tempted to do that and that's what 3D previews allows you to do you start working in 3D space like this you start to get a feel for what it's like to follow a character through 3D space and you feel you find that maybe it's more appropriate to go over the shoulder and zoom in here than what was originally in the animatic, which was this cut to a close up close up of very dramatic scene um and well, perhaps maybe we should just zoom straight in over the shoulder until we get to that shot as opposed to cutting to another camera um now obviously in the After Effects version I thought cutting to that camera was the right way to do it but now that I'm here in 3D I'm starting to realize that maybe that's not the right way to do it maybe just following that movement and then going straight over the shoulder and then through that window is gonna be the way to go okay well um, that's blocking out the, car the, the camera animations and uh, of course the next step is going to be adding the in-betweens to make these transitions from one pose to another much more smooth and um, when we're adding in-betweens that's when we can make some uh, some final changes to the pacing of the animation both character and camera okay um, let's go into in-betweens <laughs>